Thank you very much, councillors, uh, the general manager, members of senior staff, the gallery, the clergy and the press. A warm welcome to you and declare open the Tomorrow Shire Council meeting for November. And I, in declaring the meeting open, I advise that this meeting is being recorded and will be placed on Tomorrow Shire Council's webpage for public information and all present today a reminder that whilst we are speaking that we're agreeing that our views and comments are uh, being recorded and published and we're also a reminder that if or when we're speaking we're of course to be respectful to others and use the appropriate language and Tomorrow Shire Council accepts no liability for any defamatory or offensive remarks or gestures during this council meeting. Thank you. Now we proceed to our acknowledgement of country as we begin our meeting today, Tomorrow Shire councillors, our senior staff and I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of Tomorrow Shire's land and waters of the Radjuri people. We pay our heartfelt respects to their elders, both past and present, acknowledging the role they have and will continue to play as members of our Tomorrow Shire community, a special place we all proudly call home. Thank you very much. We now go to our opening prayer and we welcome to the chamber Auxiliary Lieutenant Caleb Smith, uh, please lead us in our uh, opening prayer. Thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you for this meeting, for this place, for this shire and all those gathered here today. Please bless the decisions that are made here, be they large or small. And thank you also, dear God, for this meeting, for the fact that we live in a country where we, where we elect our leaders, where these meetings occur in public with the press and regular citizens in attendance. Help us never to take our country, our democracy, our freedoms for granted. Uh, and dear God also, as we come into summer, we pray for a good harvest for clear skies and dry ground. Mm. And we pray most of all, dear God, for safety on our farms, our roads, our silos. In Jesus' name we pray with great thankfulness. Amen. Amen. Thank you very, very much. That's uh, always lovely words to start. Uh, now, we have any apologies, please. I know Councillor Bush will understand is going to be uh, a little late, and I'm sure uh, Councillor Good won't be too far away. Any declaration of any oh, interest? Excuse me. Uh, the um, Director of Administration and Finance. The Engineering Works Manager is an apology. Ah, thank you. Uh, so the Engineering works manager is an apology someone prepared to move that it be approved thank you councillor judd councillor reinhold moved and seconded all those of that opinion please say aye to the contrary no declare the motion carried thank you any declaration of any interest at this time please uh councillor oliver yeah thank you mr mayor um i have a non-pecuniary interest in um confidential which i'll um, leave the room i think thank you thanks councillor oliver <laughs> Uh, uh, the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Sinclair. Uh, thanks, Mayor. I have a non-pecuniary uh, interest in the e Economic Development uh, uh, Report, Item 4.1. The uh, author is a relation. Thank you. Uh, I have one on page uh, 514, 16.2, the Murrumbidgee Local Health District Excellence Award Sponsorship. Uh, I'm the Chairman of the Tamora Local uh, Hospital Advisory Council who were appointed by Murrumbidgee, so I will vacate the, the chair and the chamber for that consideration. Uh, no further declarations at this time. You can do it um, a little later if you don't think of it now. Uh, now, we go to, <coughs> pardon me, public presentations, and today, councillors, we do have a public presentation, uh, and that is our auditor, Mr. Brad Bowen from Crow. Oh. So, uh, well, we'll just hold fire councillors on the presentation because they're not uh, at the ready. So uh, let's now go to confirmation of the previous minutes for October. Council meeting, please. Is someone uh, prepared to move that they be received as a true and correct record? Thank you, Councillor McLaren. Councillor Judd, thank you. Moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you. Uh, Madam General Manager, any matters arising? Through you, Mr Mayor, no, there isn't. Thank you. Councillor Bushell, welcome. That's all right. You did let us know that you're going to be a few moments late. Uh, Councillors will now proceed to 
uh, the Mayoral Minute, of which you have a hard copy on your desks. And number one, uh, law and order. On the 19th of October 2023, the Country Mayors Association of New South Wales, CMA, supported by the Police Association of New South Wales uh, and the CWA, uh, launched the CMA report into crime, law and order in regional communities. The recommendations within the report call for the establishment of a parliamentary inquiry, an increase in funding to enhance frontline policing in regional communities in need, the establishment of first response agreements in all police stations and that the formula used to determine the first response agreements in those stations uh, with agreements are reviewed. The report also calls for bipartisan support from all state MPs and MLCs. The CMA has joined forces with the Police Association of New South Wales and the Country Women's Association to call for a, police, a parliamentary inquiry into crime, law and order in regional New South Wales. Our CMA Chairman, Mayor Jamie Chaffee, said statistics showed residents of rural, regional, remote New South Wales were more likely to be sexually assaulted, more likely to have their cars stolen, more likely to have their homes broken into and more likely to be impacted by domestic violence. When these crimes did occur, the police response was delayed due to the resources available. It is estimated one third of New South Wales population live outside metropolitan areas, uh, Mayor Chaffee has said, <coughs> pardon me, but we are all still second class citizens when it comes to the safety of our communities. For the first time, our CMA annual survey has revealed that crime, law and order is now in the top five emerging issues for New South Wales rural and regional local government areas. We knew crime was increasing, but we looked to the New South Wales Bureau of Crime Statistics and Research data to clarify the situation. We were shocked to learn that as well as the alarming incidents, uh, incident counts in regional New South Wales, the rate of incidents per 100,000 people was in some cases horrifying when compared to metropolitan figures. Up to 90% of crimes, including vehicle theft, breaking and entering, sexual assault and domestic violence are happening here in our regional communities, Mayor Chaffee added. We also have significantly fewer police than our city cousins and as a whole, New South Wales has less police per head of population than Queensland, Victoria and South Australia. Our police officers are already facing an incredible workload with only one police officer per 467 New South Wales residents. We have not been heard by our state leaders and our people, particularly the elderly and the vulnerable, are scared. They need to feel safe and they deserve to feel safe. In this Country Mayors Association New South Wales report, endorsed by the Police Association of New South Wales and the Country Women's Association, are calling for change. The report paints a very clear picture of a law and order crisis in some of our regional communities. Our already stretched police officers cannot continue to try to address this impossible challenge alone, Mayor Chaffee concluded. Following the success of the parliamentary inquiry into health outcomes and access to health services in regional New South Wales that was established in 2020, we know the only way forward is to seek the bipartisan support of our state members of parliament to commit to this inquiry. The Health Inquiry saw 15 public hearings across New South Wales and heard one heartbreaking story after another about the level of inequity and the lack of care uh, in some of our regional communities. It came up with 22 findings and 44 recommendations to bring about the changes needed. This is what we need to make a difference in crime, law and order in our regional, rural and remote communities. We need a bold, hard look at everything from police numbers to the experiences of people who have suffered at the hands of inequity. We need a clear way forward. Tamora Shire is fortunate to have a full complement of police officers at present and they're doing a very good job. However, there are many rural and regional New South Wales communities that have not. I have had a meeting with the Riverina Police District Commander Superintendent Andrew Splyde and Inspector Justin Faulkner to make them aware of this statewide campaign. And number two, uh, Councillor Nigel Judd. And it's great to acknowledge his wife, Mrs Helen Judd, in the chamber uh, in the gallery uh, this afternoon. 
Councillor Judd was recently bestowed the highest honour that a New South Wales councillor can receive from local government New South Wales, that being a lifetime achievement in local government award. And you'll see this exquisite uh, presentation that was given to Councillor Judd uh, sitting just below my desk. Uh, very, very impressive. Since Tamora Shire Council's inception in 1981, Councillor Judd has served as a former mayor, deputy mayor and councillor. Prior to this, he was a councillor on the former Narraburra Shire Council from 1977. Councillor Judd has achieved a significant amount during his 46 years in local government. Councillor Judd is the longest serving councillor in New South Wales according to current LG and SW records. The rare and prestigious award that Councillor Judd received was presented by LG and SW President Councillor Daria Turley AM at the annual gala dinner held on the 13th of November, which Mrs Helen Judd, the General Manager, Ms Boxall and I were honoured to have been present at. Councillor Judd received his award alongside another local government stalwart in Councillor Ken Keith OAM, the long-serving former Mayor of Park Shire. I formally place on record Council's warm congratulations to Councillor Nigel Ashley Judd OAM on the honour thus conferred. And please join me in putting your hands together for Councillor Judd. Now, I know Councillor Judd gets embarrassed with this sort of thing, but you have earned these accolades, Councillor Judd, and I'd invite you to, uh, to speak uh, briefly. Thank you. Briefly. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a big paper. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Rick, Councillors, uh, senior staff, uh, in the gallery. Um, yeah, it certainly was an honour and a privilege to um, receive this award at the local government conference. Um, being so long in council, really only this year probably it's um, dawned on me just how long I've been here. And uh, probably the dinner earlier this year has made us reflect on what, what's happened. But um, so um, this award is, was a great honour to go down Sydney and being presented in front of probably 800 delegates. And, uh, and uh, it certainly was a great privilege. Now, there's a bit of a story behind how I went, went on, but. Um, as you know, I'm a conscientious counsellor, so I timed my knee replacement surgery to the morning after the last council meeting. So I come to council, go to tea, and 5.30 next morning, Helen and I in the car heading for Wagga to uh, have a knee replacement. So um, that was at Calvary, and anyway, things went okay for the first nine or ten days, and I was in rehab, and um, anyway, about to send me home, and then the, one of the doctors noticed I had um, looked like I might have in a bit of an internal bleeding. So, fortunately, I went home, and that's what happened. I had internal bleeding for the week. I got a number of uh, hematomas in the muscles and the, the leg, and um, <coughs> you know, after a while, they got me back in Wagga, stopped the bleeding, and uh, you know, things gradually got better again. And um, I mentioned to the um, doctors, I said, Oh, I've sort of got a I hope I was getting down to Sydney on Monday night or something. And, oh, you know. Anyway, once I told them what it could be, and I said, oh, no, we'll make sure you get there. So they, they got me organised, went out of the hospital, got me to ride the drugs to get me, keep me going for the day. And uh, anyway, <coughs> I um, got down, and I must um, commend uh, Rex Airlines as well. But luckily, went probably went down in the afternoon flights down and back that were able to have a, two seats for myself to put my leg across and they were able to have um, lift machines to get me in and out of the, the plane, wheelchairs, cars and everything else, so top service. And uh, luckily I was able to get taxis then from the airport to the hotel. And, and um, I thank um, uh, Mayor and General Manager for organising them with the Love Government New South Wales staff to. Uh, Make, make sure it was easy enough for me to get up on the stage and that's so, so that was a bit of a story just to get there. Mm -hmm. I did pay for it for a few days afterwards, but anyway, <laughs> you know, it, was, it was worth it. So, <clears throat> so thanks Rick and um, Mel and all councillors for the, the privilege. It's a great honour to be nominated. 
must also thank Council Dowry Turley and Love Governor New South Wales for conferring the honour on me. It's, uh, it's one thing uh, we didn't realise until last year that I had been around long enough to be um, outlive or outperform or whatever any other councillor. So, uh, yeah, so it was um, a great honour and, uh, and I, uh, it's certainly a great um, uh, presentation I made and uh, I'm very proud of it. Mm. Anyway. And I must uh, also thank my wife, Helen. She's been putting up with me for 46 <laughs> odd years. We're, um, we're coming up to our golden wedding in a few months' time, and so really in all that time I've been on council. So, uh, yeah, so <laughs> she, as I said at the previous, you know, I think, um, I think Helen and my family sort of deserve a long service of water as well. Really. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Mr. Mayor, and uh, uh, I really appreciate, appreciate the water and, and the uh, words said. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Judd and all thoroughly deserved, and I know it was particularly special for you um, to receive it beside your long-time friend in local government, uh, uh, Councillor Ken Keith, uh, as well. It was just a special privilege for us to have been present to witness. Um, and never seen a dinner crowd like it. It was fantastic. So <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, councillors, there is a recommendation there for council to consider uh, that council endorse the following recommendation listed in the... Uh, CMA report to Crime, Law and Order, writes to uh, our state member for Kutamundra, Ms Cook, to support the establishment of a parliamentary inquiry with the suggested terms of reference in the document that Council call on members and MLCs of uh, New South Wales Parliament to commit to bipartisan support to establish parliamentary inquiry into the re and report on the rate of crime in all categories reported by the Bureau of Crime Statistical and Research in Rural, Regional, Remote New South Wales, specifically focusing on the inequity between metro and regional local government areas. Two, that Tamora Shire Council calls on all members of the New South Wales Parliament to commit to bipartisan support to increase spending on the New South Wales Police Force to increase frontline policing numbers in rural, regional, remote regions most at need. Three, Tamora Shire Council call on the New South Wales Government to commit to the minimum staffing agreements known in the New South Wales Police Force as first response agreements for non 24 hour police stations, all of which are located in rural, regional, remote local government areas. And finally, that Tamora Shire Council calls on the New South Wales Government to review the current formula used to assess staffing levels, including the universally agreed, outdated current model for those local government areas that do have a first response agreement in place. Uh, thank you. Councillor Oliver. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I fully support every one of these recommendations. Um, I think we've got to get on top of the law and order problem in this country and, um, and uh, give it the, the, the utmost that we possibly can. And while I've got the, the mic, I'd like to officially congratulate um, Councillor Judd on his, uh, on his award. Good on you, Nigel. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Uh, so you're moving. Thank you. Seconder. Thank you, Councillor Second, Good. Eight. Councillor Good. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. A, a, a vital part of law and order, and quite often overlooked by most people, particularly the government, is courts. Um, a lot of people don't realise that recently Wagga, Wagga generally has two magistrates. Uh, Tamora is on the young circuit, and we have one magistrate that travels around mm. the area. Um, Wagga had a magistrate who um, retired and they weren't replaced. So the magistrate from the young shot, the young circuit um, has been has lost a week on the young circuit and is going to Wagga. Um, this has blown out hearing times. We've got one at the moment that will be, um, from the date it was set down to hearing, it will be 12 months. Um, and that's because of lack of mm. magistrates. Um, so I would like, with the uh, movie's permission, to add a, a, an additional point there, um, that the um, Tamora Shire Council calls on all members of parliament to, uh, to commit to bipartisan support um, to um, increase the number of um, local court magistrates in rural and regional and remote local government areas. 
Thank you. I'll accept that, uh, Councillor Good. Thank you. Councillor Oliver, you happy to include that? Moved and seconded further discussion. Again, noting councillors that we have spoken to um, the superintendent and the inspector, um, and they realise that you know currently we're very blessed, um, but there's many uh, that are not uh, as fortunate as we are. Uh, so, without further discussion, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Declare that carried. And I really thank you very much, uh, councillors, for that unanimous support. Uh, councillors, we now uh, go to back to our public presentation, and that is our uh, auditors uh, from Crow. So we have uh, Mr Brad Bowen, and we have... We have Mr Wieso from uh, the audit office, so we bid you a warm welcome, gentlemen, via Zoom. And, uh, of course, we'll be considering our uh, financial uh, reports later uh, in the meeting, but we'd be very happy to, uh, to hear. Who's the spokesman? Is it Mr Bowen? Yes. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. No, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for the opportunity to jump into council in this format. Um, we, the purpose of today is to um, just confirm the outcome of the audit as concluded. Um, and, and take any questions from councillors pertaining to that. Um, as a quick um, summary of key factors, council has a 30 June balance date and the statutory deadline for submission of your financial statements with the Office of Local Government is the end of October. Um, Tomorrow Shire achieved that. You um, lodged your financial statements on the 30th of October. There are something like 120 of councils in the state of New South Wales, and for June 23, only about half achieved that. So um, a real feather in your cap that um, from a project management perspective, you were able to deliver the um, audit and get it done and launched before the um, end of October. So congratulations to Elizabeth and her team for that outcome. The audit report, um, Council receives two. One is a one that follows the auditing standard, which lands on a true and fair outcome, and the other one is a conduct report, a report on the conduct of, of the affairs of the audit for the year. In terms of the statutory audit opinion, it contains a qualification regarding RFS assets. Now, this qualification is the same as what was there in 22. Um, council stance hasn't changed around its um, perspective on control of those assets and neither has the um, on-balance perspective of the audit office. So what we've done in terms of the audit opinion is to say that the financial statements of council are true and fair except for um, the, the item as it pertains to um, RFS. And, and this has been played out in a series of um, conversations and interactions there are several councils in New South Wales in the same scenario as tomorrow where um, the, the assets haven't been brought on the balance sheet and the resulting implication is the qualification to the audit opinion. Um, so fundamentally on that one, until there is a um, adjustment to the legislation, it's likely that this status quo will, will remain. So you're aware, Mr yeah. Bowen, that tomorrow's Shire Council uh, stands by uh, our decision by way of resolution not to declare those assets and it's a very firm position that we have. Yes, ma'am, yes. yes. So as part of the um, understanding of the events for the 30 June year, we, we um, were given to provide a copy of the, of the motion and we fully understand the perspective of, of council um, and, and really in terms of an item, um, it was it was sort of concluded really in my understanding in the prior year and, and this year it's a case of the status quo continuing with um, with no new information um, coming forward on either side. The the status from the twenty two year rolls forward to twenty three. Yeah. Fully appreciate council has um, moved a the, um, a motion in that regard. Thank you. In, in terms of your financial performance for the year, not-for-profit entities are a little bit hard to, to get your head around sometimes. We've got a couple of things at play there. Um, one of them is the uh, revenue accounting standards, where in a lot of in instances, revenue is income upon receipt. Um, and an, an interesting item there for council is your bag rent. 
bank in advance. They were bef- at the end of 22, 75% in advance, and that was escalated through 23 to now being 100% in advance. So what happens there, as those financial assistance grant monies are received, council books them as income but hasn't done any of the expenses related to that. So at some future point in time, council has an obligation to execute uh, 100% or 365 days worth of financial assistance grant maintenance without any income coming in. And that's where restrictions come into play, um, which are covered a little bit later in the, in the conduct report. In addition to that, um, council uh, is, is at the mercy of weather events and there was some flooding um, in the back end of uh, 22, early 23 period, which feeds through again as income and not necessarily has all the expenditure taking place in relation to that. So you get this mismatch and it, and it becomes very hard to necessarily see with direct line of sight what is a surplus or a deficit performance. Um, but for 22, consistent with 23, Council has an element of consistency in its performance year on year, but because of the change in that FAG funding, the disaster funding, um, we need to understand the different um, elements of that bridge to the to the uh, um, to the final landing point. Council has very little debt relative to its size, so from a cash flow perspective, really what we do is have grants and um, rates on an income perspective, and then we have um, expenses in terms of. Usually it's infrastructure, property, plant, equipment, renewal. You have something of a road network network to maintain along with some other um, community building assets. Um, And and council also has, um, in terms of expenses, depreciation being the next large item. The financial position of council um, is such that you've got a balance at 30 June of around 27 million um, in cash and cash equivalents, and it has some restrictions around it. Externally restricted um, in most councils is um, water and sewer um, funds. Council's proximity to golden fields um, means that predominantly it's a sewer fund outcome for tomorrow's shine. And then from an internal restriction perspective, um, this is where we see plant replacement reserves, employee leave reserves, and, and the financial assistance training outcome. But pleasingly, the total balance minus external restrictions and internal allocations Council still left in a positive cash position. So, so um, that's a test of our solvency and your ability to pay your debts as and when they fall due. And it's pleasing to report that, that Council um, has the ability to do that. The conduct report concludes with a series of those T Corp fit for the future ratios, which sit down the back of your annual financial statements. Um, council performs quite admirably here, being a, a rural council. Um, you pass all but one, and one is the measure around um, own source funding. The benchmark is set at a flat 60% across all councils in the state, and your council has very little user pays activity. Um, so think in a capital city scenario, things like car parking um, are, are a source of revenue from the, the council. Your, your council um, does um, generate a range of income for grants, so it achieves a, a surplus from operations, You've got very um, tidy measures from the rate payers in terms of paying their rates and annual charges on time. You've got sufficient cash to pay your debts as and when they fall due. The one measure where we um, drift below the benchmark is own source funding. And it's it's a step below, but uh, there I give you some comfort in the fact that a lot of the neighbouring councils are in the same scenario and your performance is somewhat consistent year on year. Um, so. Hong was very kind and signed out the audit opinions um, on that basis just prior to the end of uh, the month. The only item of legislative non-compliance we called out was the RFS item um, and um, the financials were lodged with the Office of Local Government on that basis. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mr Bowen. And uh, to you, Mr Weesau, it's great that you've made time to address Council on this important issue and I think you'd agree with us gentlemen that um, we have an outstanding Director of Administration and Finance and team uh, that work under her and I'm sure you'd agree with those sentiments. I'm hoping you do. Don't don't misinterpret our silence. If we knew how to work the effects I would have done it. It's not in my, um, it's above my paper. 
<laughs> you left me hanging. Right. So, uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, councillors, comments or questions from our uh, auditors, please. If any, fairly comprehensive. So, councillors, you've got councillors happy. That's uh, that's a very big achievement. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, if there's no further. Uh, comments or, or questions. Uh, we thank you, uh, gentlemen, for, for the role that you play. I know that our director speaks um, uh, very highly of your team and uh, thank you very much for the respect you give to Maura Shire and particularly in relation to our strong position about these RFS assets and uh, hopefully there'll be a, uh, a suitable resolution um, uh, in the coming uh, months and years ahead. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. Okay. Very diplomatic. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, councillors. Uh, councillors, now we will start our war and peace, our, our business business papers, which are very large, and in light of that for this, uh, for this month, um, what I'm, uh, what I'm uh, wishing to do is uh, during, uh, if there's any debate on any issues, uh, that we speak the once. That's what we're hoping to keep the meeting rolling, so if, if, if that's uh, comfortable with, uh, with council, we can give that a try to keep things um, to keep things rolling. So I do uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, so let's go to our business paper, councillors, and, um, and we will get through it. Uh, page 10 of your white papers, the minutes of the Tomorrow Agriculture Innovation Centre Partnership Committee, and the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Sinclair, is the Chairman. Uh, Mr Mayor, I've moved the report to be received. Thank you. The Deputy Mayor has moved the report is received. Is there a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Judd. Moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. Uh, Mr Deputy Mayor, do you have any items you wish to highlight? Uh, no, they're basically uh, reports on general reports to be noted. Thank you. Councillors, you have the report there for you to consider. Is there a, a, a mover to adopt the report and its recommendations or is there an alternative? Councillor Good? I'll move that report. Thank you. Councillor Good has moved that way. Is there a seconder, please? Thank you, the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Sinclair. Moved, seconded, discussion. There's no further discussion. I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. The contrary, no. Declare that carried. Thank you. Oh, and councillors, by the way, dinner this evening is in house. So uh, that's for your information. I understand there's some health conscious pizzas or something. So thank you. Now, page 23, minutes of the Tora Shire Council's Traffic Committee meeting. Uh, I'm the chairman of that committee. Uh, someone prepared to move that that report is received. Thank you, Councillor Good. Councillor Oliver, moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you. Uh, Councillors, we, we spent quite a bit of time. It's probably the longest meeting uh, that I can remember, and I've been on it for a long time, uh, that we've had. However, uh, you'll note there that the, the several reports and the recommendations uh, that we've considered and we went through uh, item by item and I thought that was most um, most worthwhile. Uh, so councillors you have the report and recommendations from the Tomorrow Traffic Committee. Uh, would anybody would like to move that that report and the recommendation be adopted or is there an alternative? Councillor Oliver? Uh, thank you Mr Mayor. Um, just a few items that concern uh, may concern Councillor Judd with the area park. Um, submissions. Uh, the first one was about the speed. The police that were present were of the opinion that they wouldn't obey the 40 kilometre hour speed zone because they're not obeying the 50 anyway so they're going to increase their um, presence out there and, and probably throw the book at the offenders. Um, and the other one was the um, compression braking. Um, uh, Greg um, Miner, Minham, Minham, um from Transport for New South Wales um, didn't advocate the um, the signage um, due to the modern vehicles having what they call retarders in them now, which don't make a noise through the exhaust system. Um, I have one fitted on the school bus um, 
to late model and uh, they there's no noise at all and there's five well there's varying stages how they work I can't explain it but um, they work as well as any any other braking system so so that just to, to uh, clarify that for councillor Judd's information thank, thank you, you. councillor uh, councillor you have the report and recommendations there is someone prepared to move their adoption or is there an alternate motion councillor good you'll move the report and recommendations be adopted from the traffic committee seconder for the motion thank you councillor oliver moved and seconded uh, further discussion there's further discussion councillor irvine there's a lot of comment around um bus zones and school zones and things in the um loftus street area i think council just need to be uh, mindful of the um future development that's occurring out um to the east of town and how um, important an arterial road Loftus Street is for delivery of all that residential traffic into the CBD and to the schools and to those other areas. So um, I just hope that council keep in mind any of those high traffic uses when um, you know, 40k zones and stuff are considering being extended in those areas. Yeah, no, thanks very much, Council Irvine. Uh, so, councillors, uh, if there's no further discussion, I'll put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Declare that carried. Thank you. Uh, let's go to page 150, uh, 154, the Minister of the Assets and Operations Committee report. I was the chairman on that day in the absence of the Deputy Mayor. Is someone prepared to move that the Assets and Operations Committee report be received? Thank you, Councillor Good. Councillor McLaren moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Declare the motion and carry it. So, Councillors, you'll see there's a whole range of issues there that were uh, considered uh, by that Assets and Operations Committee, and um, uh, they are, of course, listed in the minutes. Uh, uh, Councillor Oliver. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Item 4.8. I'm sorry to be harping on this again, but... Um my feelings are known pretty far and wide about so this. So 4.8, 234. 234, yeah. yes. Um, I noticed on the news this morning that a one council in South Australia has, um, uh, has uh, ceased acknowledgement of country um, and their re rationale was that we are one country. Uh, this is what Jacinta Namichi Price um, mm championed all the way through the voice vote and uh, at least they're respecting the, the view of the nation where the 60% of the people voted uh, against their vision and um, I'm not sure whether I can move an amendment to this at this stage or not but if I could I would move an amendment that we cease uh, acknowledgement of country also. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, sorry um, Councillor Judd, we won't be able to accept it, uh, that and for, what did I say? Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon, Councillor, you. Councillor Oliver. But thank you. Uh, look, uh, Councillor Oliver, we certainly have noted your comments and, and as we've all had our say um, uh, at, uh, at the committee day that um, uh, there's certainly uh, many that would uh, agree with you. And uh, I've certainly expressed... Um, that support, however, uh, as you have and I have and, and others, that we we accept um, democracy and uh, and of course uh, we're doing our best to uh, to implement the majority decision of council. So thank you, Council Oliver. Well, if I may say so, and this is my second turn at this. Um, I don't think we are respecting democracy. The the people have spoken in the referendum. Uh, Sixty percent of the nation's people said. No. So thank you. I, I'm probably sure, anyway, thank being, you. I won't uh, go on anymore. <laughs> thank you, Council. I, I, I just am trying to be uh, where possible um, uh, strict with the one comment, one councillor, just just for this evening's meeting. Uh, I go to uh, Councillor Oliver. Uh, sorry, Councillor Irvine, uh, in discussion uh, on the Assets and Operations Committee paper uh, yeah. discussion of the motion, Councillor Irvine. On the same matter, on four point eight. I just wonder if the um, authors would consider shortening it up a little bit more and perhaps um, doing away with the, the section after the, the second hyphen and finish it off with just both past and present. 
Well, I certainly would be uh, dead set against it, and we've teased this out at the committee level at length. But uh, it's a matter for council. Councillor Reinhold. Oh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I just wanted to um, have a quick little um, discussion on 4.2, the village library services. Yep. Um, I was just wondering if uh, the new proprietor of the post office at Area Park might be interested in uh, having a small section of um, her area as, as the library, that maybe uh, books could be uh, renewed every fortnight, save having the, the van and the cost of all of that. It might help her with traffic in her business as well. Thank you, Councillor Reinhold. Uh, before I go to the Director of Administration and Finance, Councillor Judd, do you have... Oh, I just declare an interest if that, that has been raised. Thank you. The interest is noted and I'm, I'm going to... Uh, the Director of Administration and Finance. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. So in response to Councillor Reinhold's comment, um, we didn't actually go down the path of approaching uh, existing businesses or um, staking out um, potential premises. So we just uh, costed out the library-specific infrastructure that would be required to set up a you know, a fixed library um, at Area Park, and, and those costs came to close to $130,000. Um, so, um, you know, we didn't pursue it any further than that, given those costs. And um... Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Reinhold. Uh, <coughs> Councillor Judd, discussion on the motion that is adopting the reports and recommendations of the Assets and Operations Committee. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Still on the village library. The motion, I, I think I raised it at committee level, but I would have liked to have seen some uh, survey or response on how the, um, the mobile library service dairy park is going, and uh, maybe that would influence us whether we could sometime in the future afford a second or one weekly service, but um, I think we need some feedback and uh, surveying to justify or not justify that, that uh, action, please. Thanks, Councillor Judd. Uh, perhaps um, that could be part of the recommendation. If uh, does the general manager director think, you know, as far as um, if it's adopted, that consider the inclusion of low-cost options. When could that be encompassing, or, or would we need to tease it out more specifically? General manager. Through you, Mr Mayor, we can make note of that um, in terms of further considerations, but I'm happy to have um, that as a recommendation for us to take away as well. By way of motion, separate, yeah. yeah. By way of a motion, if that's required, but um, we will make a note of that in terms of feedback. Okay, so Councillor Judd, are you happy that that's noted at this time and Council are aware of what you've said and there's uh, nods in the chamber so the General Manager is aware that um, Council would like to see that uh, considered? Thank you. So there being no further discussion, and that is to adopt the recommendations and the reports of the Assets and Operations Committee. Councillor... So you've already moved that. Councillor Good, Councillor McLaren, discussion on the motion to adopt... <laughs> We're on a roll. <laughs> so if there's no further discussion... That was receiving reports. Are you sure? Yeah. Is it? Oh, well, there you go. I had it written down as... Um... So, is there a motion? <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Good. Councillor Reinhold, a moving the Assets and Operations Committee uh, report and recommendations be adopted. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Well, there you go. Thank you very much. Let's uh, now proceed, Councillors, over to page 246, the Economic Development Visitations Committee report, and Councillor McLaren is the chairman. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd like to move the report be received. Thank you. Councillor McLaren's moved the report's received. Second, Councillor Bushell. Moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McLaren, any items you wish to highlight? There was a very comprehensive item 4.1 on HR needs analysis, which was... Um, a very good report. Um, I'll have something to say on another matter, but I'll open it up to the council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McLaren. Uh, Councillors, you have the report, Economic Development Visitations Committee, there for you to consider. Councillor Good. 
Um, I just like to make a comment on four point three, the regional university study hub. So page number, please. Uh, page number two eighty five. Thank you. Um, this is something that I raised with council before I was on council. I think it's um, an excellent um, idea. Um, we do have many people studying uh, in Tamora distance, um, and I've had. Well, in the last 10 years, I've had five different people studying various degrees. Um, and something like this, I think, would be very, very beneficial. Um, it would provide resources for people studying where they can't attend on campus. Um, and I'd just like to commend um, the, uh, well, to Craig for um, proceeding with this. Thank you, Councillor Good. Uh, go to Councillor McLaren. Thank you, Mr Mayor. On the same item, I kind of feel that um, the country university centres started in Cooma at a time when uh, the technology hadn't got to the level where it is now. Mm. And I think that um, spending twelve to 15000 on a management report is a lot of money. That's our annual donations budget. And I think that... The library has been enhanced so much over the previous years that I would like to see um, the library be more of a centre for studying options for all people, not just university students, for you know TAFE students or high school students to use. Um, I think that technology has advanced so much that you can do your online exam, get all your lectures over the over your own personal computer in your own private space on demand. And I think the need to go to a, a single centre has, I think time has gone past that stage. And I also feel that the country university centres operate on a model where they have a parent body. And then if you want to have a country university centre in your town, you have your own body and you have your own board of directors made of community representatives. And the funding that's being applied for is only seed funding and would only cover mm operational expenses for the first initial phase. So I'm concerned about an ongoing, ongoing. cost of such a centre. I think it probably does work well in Cooma and perhaps some other more isolated centres, but I think with our proximity to Wagga, I'd be more in favour of saving the money and um, enhancing our library. And yeah, I'd just be a bit cautious because I just feel that I haven't seen an obvious demand from the community in yeah, I just don't think that it's quite warranted at when we've advanced so much in technology. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor McLaren. So therefore, effectively, um, you're not supportive of the recommendation from the committee on the bottom of page 285. So, uh, sorry, Councillor Evan, can I just go back to clarify Councillor McLaren? Thank you. Councillor McLaren. No, I think that if the TAFE would like to pursue some option in this space, I think that's very much in their court. Um, I think we could facilita facilitate discussions, but I think that um, we shouldn't be putting our money into doing a report, which I feel is quite expensive. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, you, would you like to... Are you, are you moving a motion in relation to 4.3? I'd like to move a motion for 4.3 that we note the report. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I will accept that. Second, Councillor Reinhold. So we're just talking about 4.3 Regional University Hub. Uh, so I'm going to go to Councillor Irvine. I'd just like to make comment in regards to that. My daughter um, completed a university degree during COVID and didn't attend university once over that period mm. and still gained successful qualifications. It wasn't a, a super high-end um, qualification in you know, medicine or something like that, but it was still um, yeah, the process and um, fundamentally this day and age, most of it's being prepared to be delivered online. Um, and if you can access reasonable internet services, then you can pretty well do it from anywhere. So that was just an observation. And I think COVID's have brought a lot of that forward mm. um, and people have got a lot of those facilities at home and um, trying to sort of centralise it. It's a bit like the CTC where all the computers got put there. By the time it got put in place, it was outdated and it really got very little use. Thank you, Councillor Irvine. I go to Councillor Good. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think the um, yes, I agree that there are um, that the 
the university courses you can do online now are, have progressed, but I don't think this centre is just to sit there and go through your work. It's got various um, various um, benefits. Um, one of them is camaraderie. You uh, you're there. Um, you're with other people who are studying. So you um, when you surround yourself with people who are studying, you're more likely to get in and do things. Whereas if your other friends are out playing sport or going to the pub or something like that, you, you you can sometimes struggle to get that time. So if you know that other people are doing it, it you you sort of can sometimes get it, um, get support from those people. Um, secondly, that when you're doing a university course, it's not just about listening to the lecture or reading the book or doing the assignment. You Sometimes you need to talk to someone about how exactly you need to do it or how you should just structure um, a a, an assignment or um, what exactly is a person asking for when in a question and so having so, a centre like this would particularly if there's someone there to support them um, can be a great benefit of people who are stuck on certain things. Um, thirdly there's 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 a, a section of our community who can't afford a lot of the equipment you need. Um, it's amazing how many people I see don't have a printer um, just simple stuff like that, whereas if they go to a central place, um, they can get some decent internet speed, they can have that sort of equipment. Um, it just helps them do what they need to do to get through their course. Um, and also, it's amazing how many people can't find a quiet place at their house, because if they've got siblings and there's noise and running and telly and all sorts of things, sometimes you just want to a quiet space where you can sit down and study. And I see this as an area where you could do that. You know that if you go there, other people there are studying, you can sit down, you can concentrate, and you can get your work done rather than being distracted. Thanks very much, Councillor Good. Uh, <laughs> Councillor McLaren, very briefly. Just very briefly, I do agree with those last few comments on the space and the need to go somewhere central to print off and things, but I would see that there's a great potential to to add to our library facilities in that space for all students and people who want to learn. So that's where I'm coming from. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor McLaren. Councillor Oliver, discussion yeah, on the motion to note the report on Relation 4.3. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. I support uh, Councillor McLaren's um, views on this and also Councillor Irvine's. Uh, modern technology allows for such things to happen uh, remotely. And uh, I mean, Twelve to fifteen thousand dollars is a lot of money, and uh, I don't know that the ratepayer should be picking up the tab for somebody's education. So I support um, Councillor McLaren. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Oliver. The Deputy Mayor, Councillor Sinclair. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Yeah, I can see valid points in both sides of the story here. Um, I, I guess the, the motion that Councillor uh, McLaren put up is to note the report. I, I, I don't sort of why well, I, I think I'm supporting what the council is saying. I think it needs to perhaps be a more positive motion in that perhaps it needs to be look at what uh, other options our library and TAFE can offer in that space rather than just um, yeah, just saying that to report. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Councillor McLaren, in relation to the motion. I take that on board and I agree that potentially maybe the motion should be that that in the we council receive a report on future enhancements at the library that may um, encompass the uh, encompass facilities like the CUC, like those sort of facilities. Thank you, Councillor McLaren. So amending that as a second, a happy Okay, thank you. So can we capture that, please? And then I'm going to go... Oh, sorry. I'll go to um, Councillor Good when we capture that. Sorry, Pardon? Let's do that in the front half. So noting it and further. So we'll just get this right, Councillor McLaren and Councillor Reinhold, just so then uh, we'll go to Councillor Good and Councillor Bushel. Sorry, can you... Councillor McLaren. So the Council consider alterations to the Tomorrow 
library. It facilitates um, tertiary Yeah, that's, that's it. So, second, are happy with that? Councillor Reinhold? Yes, yes. Thank you, that's great. Thank you. So we've got that. We'll go to Councillor Good. Thank I've just you. got a quick comment about the library. It's only open limited hours, and if you're working, there's no, you'd have no chance of getting there. Thank you, Councillor Good. Uh, unless that uh, alters the Tomorrow Library uh, or other facilities, uh, perhaps. But anyway, uh, Councillor Bushell, discussion on the um, motion. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I kind of feel like the last paragraph of the whole report is pretty much the same as the motion. So I'm quietly confused as to how the motion's going to achieve anything when it's pretty much in the report. Well, so I suppose that it's not going to cost the way I'm reading it, Councillor Bushell. So I see that the person who's written the report is seeking permission to get someone to identify the case. Yes? At a cost of between twelve and 15000 But now we're saying we do want to investigate that, so who's going to investigate that? Well, I thought, I assumed, and we shouldn't assume, but it was internal, but um, Councillor, uh, sorry, um, excuse, uh, can you turn, thank you. Councillor McLaren. I would say that would be done internally in consultation with the librarian. Yeah, well, that, that's what I thought, but thank you for clarifying that. So, Councillor Bushell, you're just trying to tease out clarity on that point. Yeah, so when does the stream to applications... So, uh, when, thank do the, you. when do those rounds occur? Are we, are the, do the staff have enough time? Do they, can they schedule it? Like, I see that the staff are possibly putting this idea forward because they can't possibly fit it into their work environment to, due, due to constraints, and that's why they're going elsewhere. That's what I'm reading the report as. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Bushell. Councillor McLaren, just to clar uh, clarity. I was intending to not apply for that stream to in, build a CUC and just to enhance the library with grants, et cetera, to create additional space to assist people to study at the library. Thank you. I'm now going to go to the general manager to comment on uh, the motion that's before us. Thank you, the general manager. Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would be um, suggesting we do not have the resources to proceed with the funding application if um, we didn't bring a consultant in to assist with this particular business case. Um, the, um, we've considered the time uh, that we have available and resources and um, our ability to deliver within the time frames and don't believe we could achieve it without the assistance for this. Um, and for clarity, it is, uh, it is applying, what is being put forward is applying for funding for a regional university study hub, which is not the same as a um, country university. So it is a different, potentially a different model and by undertaking a business case, you explore the different models that exist that would work specifically for Tamora Shire. Um, and it, it was proposing to include reference to two sites, which was NRCC House, so at the rear of the library um, area is one of those sites, as well as a TAFE Tamora campus as well. So just for clarity, that if we didn't proceed with um, engaging the consultant to do this business case work, I don't believe we would have a possibility of applying for that funding. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a motion, uh, councillors, before you in relation to 4.3 Regional University Study Hub that Councillor McLaren, Councillor Reinhold uh, has moved that Council note the Regional University Study Hub report and further the Council consider alterations to the Tomorrow Library to facilitate tertiary studies. So, uh, there being no further discussion, I'm going to put that motion again just in relation to 4.3. All those of that opinion, please raise your hands. To the contrary, no. I declare the motion carried. Thank you. So the remainder of the Economic Development Visitations Committee report and recommendations, uh, someone prepared to move that way. Thank you, Councillor Irvine. Seconded, Councillor Bushell. Moved, seconded. Discussion, the further discussion, Councillor Bushell. Thank you, Mr Mayor. So as it was a direction that we adopted in our delivery plan many moons ago, so does that now drop off our delivery plan in future, or how does that work? Uh, thank you, Councillor Bushell, the, the General Manager. Mm -hmm. 
So the general manager. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I would be recommending that we um, say that due to resolution of council that that um, no longer be um, pursued as part of our direction. And it does say just investigate. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, where are we up to? Have I put no? No further discussion on the adoption of the remainder of the reports and recommendations for assets uh, for economic development visitations. If not, I'll put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. I thank you very much. Now, let's go to page 304, the minutes of the Aerodrome Users Committee and Councillor Judd delegated the chairmanship to Councillor Oliver. Councillor Oliver. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the, uh, I'd like to um, move that the, the minutes, minutes or the report be uh, adopted. Uh, not adopted, received. Thank you. Councillor Oliver is moving that the Aerodrome Users Committee report minutes uh, be received. Seconded, Councillor Judd. Thank you. Moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion and carry it. Does uh, Councillor Judd or Councillor Oliver have anything they wish to highlight uh, out of the report? Councillor Oliver? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just that the, um, this um, aerodrome manual is a work in progress uh, and uh, it's not um, complete yet. Uh, I understand Mr Mike Cleaver is helping the engineer with some of the technical stuff in it and believe me, it, it is technical. I don't pretend to understand too much that's in there, but um, but yes, just to let everyone know that it's still a work in progress. So, no, thanks. Thanks very much, Councillor Oliver. Councillor Judd, do you have anything to add? Thank you. Uh, well, Councillors, you have the Aerodrome Users Committee report and recommendations. Is someone prepared to move they be adopted or is there an alternative? Councillor Bushell, moving that way. Thank you. Seconder, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Moved and seconded. No further discussion. Not, I'll put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. The contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. Right, so that's one half <laughs> down. You're doing very well. Let's go to page 425. The 10.1, the Mayor's report for the month of October. And there's a recommendation at the bottom of 428 that the Mayor's report is noted. I beg your pardon, before we go to 425, I thank the General Manager. We go to page 424, Delegates Reports. Let's go to, de to Delegates Reports. Uh, if uh, councillors have any Delegates Reports, I go to Councillor Reinhardt. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thanks. Okay, um, on Sunday the 12th of November, I represented council at the Young Regional Conservatorium uh, final concert for 23 and presentation of awards. Um, it was a fabulous afternoon and uh, we should congratulate Taz Rundle. He won the Tomorrow Community Award for the band. Uh, Sten Christmas won the Tomorrow Town Band or Perpetual Award and Sarah Bruner won the Tomorrow Shire Council Music Scholarship. Um, it was a great afternoon and Tomorrow was well represented in the awards and also participated with several of the students uh, performing on the afternoon. Uh, the afternoon concluded um, with the regional combined choir with a lot of familiar Tamora faces. Um, it was a fantastic afternoon. Okay, then uh, the TBEG had their AGM on the 9th and we have a new president, Nicola Curry. Um, and I just wanted to let council know the T bucks, you know, little cards mm. that we have out in the community, $308,000. <laughs> total load so far. That's unreal. So, Since inception. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. great. That is terrific. Um, uh, let me see. And then on Friday the 17th, I went to the opening of the Bald Archies at the Bondwara Centre, and it's been going for 27 years. So, fantastic. Should go and have a look. <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much, Councillor Rallard, and thank you for uh, making yourself available to uh, represent us uh, at uh, those uh, functions. And it's great to see our inaugural scholarship at the uh, Conservatorium of Music was also presented, so, and we hope that continues long into the future. So thank you. Further delegates' reports? 
Councillor Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, last Wednesday evening, um, I attended the Springdale um, Progress Association meeting, and um, everything's going quite well out there. They've had a very successful um, fundraising uh, that coincided with the Regency Ramblers um, event. Um, they were lucky enough to get some meat donated by the, um, the, the feedlot out there, uh, which helped them with um, achieving more, uh, mm. more of a profit, if you want to use that word. I, I've got to give it to them. There's only a few of them, um, about four, and uh, they really have a crack out there. They, um, they get off their backsides to help themselves and raise money. So um, yeah, I think it's really good that, that we've still got mm. these smaller communities, you know, helping themselves. So. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's yeah, thanks, Councillor Oliver. You're spot on. The good Lord helps those that helps themselves, and so does Council wherever possible. <laughs> uh, any further delegates' reports? Uh, obviously, the Local Government New South Wales Conference has report in the information paper. Of course, we had our uh, country mayors. There'll be a report uh, next month uh, just to highlight uh, that. And of course, uh, RERock um, had our AGM in October, and there'll be the last board meeting for the year uh, tomorrow week in Wagga Wagga. So, no further delegates report. Uh, further delegates reports, Councillor uh, Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just forgot I um, attended the uh, Lake Centenary committee meeting on, on behalf of Councillor Sinclair, who was unavailable due to harvest um, reasons. Uh, everything's going all right there. Um, they're looking forward to um, getting their bridge um, their, for their walkway in place, uh, particularly in the... Um, they also tune into the same fellow I um, get my weather forecast from, and they too want it done before the big floods come in between 26 and 2029. 20, so <laughs> I don't know whether we can, uh, well, I think we should be able to achieve that. So, but yeah, that was all. Everything else is going all right. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. And I, I understand that it's um, in good hands, the bridge. <laughs> is that right, Mr. Engineer? Um. <clears throat> what I know is a significant grant expires on the 30th of June, so yeah, I'm not sure what's going to happen there yet, but yeah, one way or another, something's going to happen. That's right, because we're not going to lose, we're not going to lose the money. <laughs> no, we won't be losing the money and the bridge uh, will be erected at, uh, sooner or later. Yeah. Three. Just through you, Mr Chairman, I, I think if I'm honest, we might just have a chat to the funding authority just to see what the you know, chances of an extension are, but if that's uh, not possible, we'll, we'll be looking to try and install in some way. Um, so we'll see how we go. Thank you. No further delegates reports. If not, now we go to page 425, uh, the Mayor's report for the month of October 10.1, the Mayor's recommendation on page 428 that the Mayor's report is noted. Thank you, Councillor Good has moved recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Bushell. Move, seconded, discussion. There's no discussion. I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. The contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. Uh, page 429, staff reports. Motion to receive staff reports. Councillor Reinhold, thank you. Councillor Good, moved, seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you very much. We go over to page 430, the General Manager's Report 12.1, Calendar of Events, the General Manager. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, you will see that there are quite a few events um, coming up in um, December um, as we lead into the Christmas period. Um, and in particular, just to note that um, the Council Administration Office will be closed between the 25th of December and the 1st of January. Thank you, Madam General Manager. And also just to remind councillors that haven't uh, RSVP'd yet, the closing date uh, to RSVP for the councillors' Christmas dinner on um, uh, the 7th of December is tomorrow. If you could let the Executive Assistant, Mrs Rands, know uh, by the end of tomorrow, that would be great. Thank you. Any comments on the calendar of events? If not, uh, there's a recommendation for you to consider that the calendar of events be noted. 
Thank you, Councillor Good. It was moved that way. Seconded for the motion, Deputy Mayor, Councillor Sinclair. Thank you, moved. Seconded. No discussion. I'll put the motion. All those with that opinion, please say aye. aye. The contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. 431. 12.2, uh, the seals. General Manager. I'll defer to the Director of Administration and Finance in relation to these seals. Thank you. The Director. Um, through you, Mr Mayor. So there's two um, documents which the seals have been, seal has been affixed to. Uh, the first one is the Regional and Local Roads Repair Program uh, funding deed. It's a deed of variation, so I believe Council's aware. Uh, we received $2.4 million uh, in the last financial year, and now the government has announced a further uh, three odd million dollars. So they've just varied the existing agreement rather than uh, establishing a new one. And the second one is a renewal of the deed of agreement for the Community Recycling Centre, the CRC. Thank you, Madam Director. Councillor Good. Thank you. You move the recommendation that Council endorse the seals being affixed to the above documents. Thank you. Seconded, Councillor Bushell. Moved, seconded, discussion. There's no further discussion. I'll put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. For the contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you. Now, 432, 12.3, uh, the alcohol free zone. The general manager. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Through you, Mr Mayor, we um, have not received any submissions when um, the alcohol-free zones were out on exhibition, um, and so we are recommending that we proceed um, with putting them in place for a period of four more years. Thank you. Thank you, Madam General Manager. Councillor Bushell? I'd just like to move the recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Bushell is moving the recommendation. Uh, is there a second to Councillor McLaren? Thank you. Moved. Seconded. Discussion? Just in discussion, councillors, I, I do know that the police um, think that uh, these alcohol-free zones that council instituted some years ago now are most helpful uh, for them, which uh, I think is an important reminder for us uh, to hear that um, it certainly proves um, useful for them. So there's no further discussion. I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, anything of an urgent late nature from the general manager? Through you, Mr. Mayor, no. Thank you very much. Uh, page 434, the Engineering Services Department report 13.1 Transport for New South Wales Speed Zone Review, Goldfields Way. The, the uh, uh, Engineering Assets Manager. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, report is as written, and I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you. Uh, just a reminder to councillors, I'm sure you're aware, but for those listening, that uh, this particular report isn't um, a, a decision of uh, council. This is one obviously brought on by the Transport for New South Wales. Just a reminder. Uh, Councillor Bushell. I'd just like to remove the recommendation. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bushell is moving a recommendation, page 435, that council receive and note the report. Uh, is there a second? A councillor good. Thank you. Moved. Second. Discussion. Discussion. Councillor McLaren. Do they want a response from council regarding the decision as part of this meeting outcome? Thanks, Councillor McLaren. The uh, engineering assets manager. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Oh, this not. I don't think so. I, I think it was just. Uh, it was really out of. It was notification out of courtesy. Really. Um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I know, look, councillors, we've got to be prepared. We're going to uh, obviously cop some flack on this, but at the end of the day, it's a decision of transport for New South Wales. Uh, so no further discussion on the motion, I'll put it. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. Anything of an urgent late nature from the uh, engineering assets manager? Uh, no, Mr Mayor. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Uh, let's proceed, Councillor, to page 436, the Environmental Services Department report, 14.1, development application, and I go to the director. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Um, DA 51 2023, we're uh, tabling the planning report, which was uh, prepared by an independent third-party consultant in accordance with council-related development policy. 
Um, a lot of the preliminary pre-assessment work and the consultation phase was carried out by the town planner who handed over the, um, the findings from that consultation along with the details of the application to a company called DA Busters who have prepared a very extensive planning report and, uh, and the recommendations are on, uh, there's five or six pages of them commencing on page four, uh, 470 I think, so for council's decision. Thank you, Mr. Director. Uh, councillors, you have the development application in front of you uh, to consider. I go to Councillor Judd. <coughs> Thanks, Mr. Mayor. A few points. Uh, on page 437, mentions the upgrading of Tom Moon Avenue, including widening provision and curb and guttering. And also mentions other places where they're removing all the trees. Well, this, this is probably the first time it's really been mentioned, and uh, I'd like to know a bit more about it. Who's going to be paying for all this? And uh, that's a, our public road at the moment, so yeah. got to get an answer to that one, please. Thank you, Councillor Judd. Uh, I refer to uh, the Director, just uh, to clarify. Thank you. That would be a cost to the developer, particularly on the side of the, uh, the development site. Um, the uh, northern side... Uh, um, might refer that to the engineering works manager. The engineering uh, assets manager. Yeah, <laughs> uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, certainly the cost on the opposite side of the road will be up to council if it um, was to go ahead. Uh, it definitely it has been mentioned before. Um, I can't pinpoint exactly where or when, um, but I can find that out. Um, that's all I've got to add. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Councillor Judd. Next query is also to do with Tom Moon Abbey. Is that, <coughs> do I assume that the blocks that butt up against Tom Moon Avenue will have all have access onto Tom Moon Avenue? Thank you, Councillor Judd, the Director. Uh, yes, that's correct. Thank you, Councillor Judd. Just seems in other developments we seem to require like to, like a service road or something so that we don't have so many um, entrances or gates going onto the on a, onto a, onto a main road, that's all. So. Thanks uh, very much Councillor Judd. I now go to Councillor Irvine. Just in comment to that, it's no different to the next street across where all the residents have got access to that roadway and then the hangers have access to the taxiway at the rear and it's um, no different to the residents that are already in place on Tom Moon Avenue who have got access direct to Tom Moon Avenue from the front of their properties now. I don't see any real variation of what's the standard out there. Thanks, Councillor Irvine. I go to Councillor McLaren. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I note that there's no provision for any footpaths and although I'm, I can understand that it's not in the PAMP at the moment because I guess this development wasn't considered when the PAMP was updated, um, particularly the lack of a footpath down Tom Moon Avenue. When I've been to events out there, it's quite common for people just to straddle, walk down the roadway, and I think there's going to be a considerable more amount of traffic on that road, and I feel that a footpath is essential, really, to facilitate the walk, the pedestrian access down Tom Moon Avenue, especially with... Um, um, you know, the extra traffic. I just think it's it's discriminatory almost against people in wheelchairs and people with prams who have to travel on the road. And I think for a safety issue, there should be a footpath at least down Tom Moon Avenue, and if not, both. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor McLaren. I uh, go to Councillor Bushell. I just want to clarify, we only have one comment, correct? Well, look, ideally, um, ideally that's what we're, we're trying to work on uh, Councillor Bushell, um, wherever possible. I know DA's, um, um, you know, it's a bit uh, trickier, but okay, uh, Councillor Bushell. Uh, I just wanted to... Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wanted to make the question regarding a footpath. Um, where would it start and where would it end? Because I'd hate to see us put a footpath where we have before and then the request is that we need to link it to somewhere. Um, so mm. that's my concern, that there's no linkage out there. Um, and how that would work. Yeah, thank you, 
very much, uh, Councillor Bush. I don't know whether the director has any comments on Councillor McLaren or Councillor Bush's comments. Yeah, just with regard to the footpath, I guess we've just been consistent with the, what happens on 10 FTS Street. Um, it's got the caravan park, the Aero Club, and probably arguably similar amounts of traffic, but, yeah, that's quite within Council's prerogative to request that. Thank you very much. Councillor McLaren. Can I add that to a request that they put a footpath? So would you like to move the recommendation with the inclusion of Yeah, that? I would like to make the inclusion of a footpath down Tom Moon Avenue, please. Thank you. So you're moving that way. Seconded for the motion, please. Thank you, Councillor Good. Moved, seconded. Uh, discussion on the motion. Uh, Councillor Bushell. I think, Ms Mayor, I still don't feel like I had my answer. Uh, my question answered. Uh, sorry, Councillor yep. Bushell. So, uh, Mr. Oh. Uh, Mr Manager... Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. <coughs> I guess it depends on how you view the, the cycleway. Uh, you know, lots of people walk on the cycleway on Airport Road. Um, it definitely, I guess, does link to the museum as well. Um, but, yeah, we certainly don't go down the path of, uh, you know, I heard the, the other road mentioned. If we, <coughs> well, I guess we work on a hierarchical structure and connectivity. Um, and I don't see it that we'll be probably putting footpaths down cul-de-sac streets and things like that into the future because we just physically won't, one, we won't be able to afford it and two, we'll never get it rolled out everywhere. Uh, thank you. Councillor Bushell? I just um, have one concern. Look, if there's going to be... Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. If there's going to be driveways, like if we make them do the footpath for, like, part of the development, I'd... We're going to have issues of up and down. We're going to have issues of people going out with their mobility scooters because they can go out the cycleway all the way and there's going to be driveways interrupting that footpath up and down, up and down. We're going to receive trip hazard requests as we have done in the past. So I don't know how you can sort of enforce it on the development and then the people who purchase the site then put a driveway in and then it conflicts the infrastructure. Thank you very much, Councillor Bushell. Uh, the Director. Yeah. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Yeah, it certainly does uh, increase the degree of difficulty and, you know, ideally the footpath should be done at the end of all the development. So perhaps we could take some kind of um, bond off the you know, or, or a monetary amount that we could, after all the, the um, driveways are put in, that we what's left, you know, we could link it up then. But, yeah, it would be uh, difficult to uh, put that in first and, and a bit of a waste, to be honest. Thank you very much. Um, just to clarity, Councillor McLaren uh, and Councillor Good, so in relation to the uh, motion that's before us that um, uh, approve the DA in accordance with the conditions provided within the assessment report and further that a footpath is included down Tom Moon Avenue, uh, am I right in assuming that um, that is at the developer's expense? Yep. Okay, thank you. That correct, Mr Director? Uh, it's up to council. It's not one of our recommendations. So. Okay, so we'd probably needed that add added. Yeah. So the mover and second are happy. Thank you. The uh, the the, the uh, engineering assets manager. Yeah, probably just ask some clarity on that. Generally speaking, when we ask a developer to put footpath in, it's to the development boundary, um, and this boundary actually extend. You know, to put a footpath in to complete it, it'll it'll take up some of the museum's land as well, and then in that scenario, council will put in half and then charge the landowner the other half. That's how it's always been done. Uh, thank you. I, I'll just, uh, Councillor Irvine, if I may, I'll just go to Councillor McLaren just to seek clarity. So are you recommending that the developer put in 50% of the cost of the footpath? The, the manager. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Now, I'm recommending that if you're asking the developer to build the footpath, he builds it on his development frontage, and then the council and the adjacent landowner will have to front up the cost for the remainder that goes from the development boundary down to the museum. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Thank you. So, Councillor McLaren and Councillor Good, we've got to... Then you want to amend... Uh, so you're, you're happy at the developer's expense? Yes, it only go to the engine development annual. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And you're happy, Councillor Good. Thank you very much. Councillor Irvine. Uh, question of the director in regards to the code B taxiway marked out in blue on page 439 that's um, at the cost of the developer as well I'm assuming 
Thank you, uh, um, Councillor Irvine. We'll go to the Director of Environmental Services. Uh, Deferred to the Town Planner on that one. Thank you. The Town Planner, you have the call. Thank you, Mr Mayor. So um, the Code B taxiway that's um, highlighted shaded pink is just clarifying that is what Councillor Irvine's referring to. So that um, taxiway is um, subject separately uh, where Council has um, an arrangement where that will be built uh, separately. So uh, this development is a deferred uh, consent so that the development uh, cannot be uh, occupied and used until such time that taxiway is arrangements have been made for that to be built. So it's um, se a separate arrangement. Thank you, Madam Town Planner. Uh, thank you, Councillor Irvine. Uh, Councillors, you have a recommendation there on your screens to consider. There's no further discussion. And winding up, uh, Councillor McLaren. Yep, page 475, just with the street tree selection. It's got tree of the native species approved by Council. I'm wondering if we could just have that selected from Council's street tree policy, which I think includes a list of thanks, varieties. Thanks, Councillor McLaren. Uh, so the director, happy to include? No objections. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Judd. Just had a query on the stormwater, page 465, the um, <coughs> issue was raised. The applicant seems to think that having a, uh, stormwater drains for one to five year storms is good enough. And um, <coughs> whereas looking to the Erie Park flood study at the moment, and they seem to, having it's got to be one to a hundred year mm. stormwater. So I can't see why. It seems to be a very taking a cheap option on this one and yeah. worrying about a you know, big storm if it does hit the area. Yeah, thanks, Councillor Judd. Yes, it's just that inconsistent um, language, isn't it? Uh, the Director? I think it's pretty standard to, for that level of storm infrastructure to be the guiding development for, for guiding standard for most development. Thank you, Mr. Director. Uh, nothing further, Councillor Judd. Thank you. Well, there's no further discussion on the motion. Uh, Councillor Bushell. I, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm still nervous with the current resolution. I, is that going to be uh, a condition of consent, or what is what is the the recommendation going to? Uh, thank you, Councillor Bushell. My understanding, whether well, just it's just part of the the, the uh, condition. Of consent, that was my understanding, but I'll defer. Yeah, to if it's if it's adopted by council, it becomes a, an additional condition of consent. Yeah, thank you, thanks, Councillor Bushell. Uh, so to wind up, Councillor Irvine. There's some more discussion regarding the detention basin and, and um, stormwater flows on page 464. It seems to indicate that the detention basin deals with a 1%. So I think that's a 1 in 100. Is that correct? That's right. Thank you, Councillor. So Man. that may allay um, Councillor Judd's fees in relation to the, the 1 in 5 application from what I understand they're saying there. Thanks, Councillor Irvine. Uh, well, councillors, uh, we've had um, very good discussion, as we should, on the motion. I'll remind you of that resolution that's before us. Uh, on the motion of councillor... Yes, thank you. Uh, on the motion of councillor McLaren and councillor Good, that council approve the development application in accordance with the conditions provided within the assessment report, and further, that a footpath is included down Tom Moon Avenue uh, at the developer's expense. And, uh, of course, being a development application, we'll need you to uh, show your hands uh, in relation to how you choose to vote. So I'm going to now put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please raise your hands. I declare the motion carried unanimously. And uh, thank you very much for that, councillors. And thank you, Mr Director and Madam Town Planner and all of our team that have been part of, um, uh, part of the, the process to date. Uh, nothing of a urgent late nature from the director. No, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, let's now go to page 478, the Department of uh, Administration Finance Report 15.1, the audited financial statements. The director. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so the financial statements were presented by the auditor earlier. Um, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Madam Director. Uh, councillors, you've heard from the auditor, you've read the reports. Uh, I go to Councillor McLaren. Just a question about that own source ratio. Is there any way we could lobby the government to provide a benchmark for rural councils to have a benchmark that's realistic for us? Because clearly we, we don't have a user pays revenue base like Bondi or whatever with parking and those sorts of revenue raising activities. But so we're always going to fail. And it just concerns me that's all that they maybe they could have two tiers. Thanks, Councillor McLaren. The director, do you have a comment in response? Bless you, whoever that was. Yeah, th through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you could try. I know some of the other ratios do have a um, distinction between rural and metro councils. Um, yeah, so the, the issue with us is too that we do have such a high level of grant funding and then in conjunction with uh, low capacity to generate other income. Mm. Thank you. Uh, councillors, <coughs> you see the report there. There is a recommendation for council to consider that we receive and note the financial statements and audit reports for the year ending 30 June 2023. Councillor Oliver. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll move the report. Thank you. Move the recommendation, page 478. Second for the motion, the Deputy right. Mayor, Councillor Sinclair. Thank you. Discussion? There's no uh, further discussion. We'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. The contrary, no. Clear the motion. Carried. Thank you. And again, a warm congratulations uh, to you, Madam Director, and your team uh, in relation to uh, the presentation of those statements. And we know that <laughs> there's a heck of a lot of work involved, but um, our Council are deeply grateful. Thank you. Uh, Council, as we go over to page 498, 15.2, quarterly budget review, the, G, uh, the Director. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. So the report's as written. Happy to take any questions. Thank you. Uh, councillors, you have the quarterly budget review for you to consider. Uh, just on page 503, uh, I might ask the uh, engineering assets manager just to clarify, uh, if I may, uh, the airport caravan park fencing, just that, um, uh, that $6,000. $900 over budget, or that's how it's worded. The, the manager, can you clarify, please? Uh, I can try. Uh, yeah, thanks, three, Mr Mayor. Um, so I, I guess my biggest explanation would be, one, it was probably re-voted, handed over a year, and then secondly, you know, I guess when we allocated this within the budget, it was an estimate based on... Um, you yeah, know, what we thought the install of the, of the bollards might cost. Um, the bollards were purchased separately. This was the labour and um, installed materials only and it just happened to cost more than was first anticipated. And you, you don't find out until after the fact is the other part. You go and install and then all your costs come in. Um, so you're very hard to hit a moving target. Um, and Alex's bloke's done it. There you go. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> anyway, look, um, thank you, Mr. Manager. Uh, just, it's appropriate, obviously, that we ask, um, and I hope you're listening, uh, the works engineering manager. <laughs> no, listen, it wouldn't have mattered if it was Alex's blokes or my bloke. Yeah. <laughs> Short story is it cost more than we thought it was going to cost. Indeed, them. thank you. But um, I think overall we're very good at not having overruns. Uh, anything further, councillors, in the quarterly budget review? If not, there is a recommendation there for council to consider on page 498 that council adopt the quarterly budget review for quarter ending 30 September 2023. Councillor Oliver, Councillor Good, thank you. Moved and seconded. Discussion? There's no further discussion. I'll put the motion to you. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. I declare the motion carried. And again, thank uh, the Director uh, most sincerely. Uh, nothing of an urgent late nature, Madam Director? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Now, let's go to page 511, correspondence 16.1, Music in the Regions, the General Manager. Thank you. Through you, Mr Mayor, um, I think the um, correspondence 
we received in relation to this is pretty self-explanatory um, in terms of um, the donations um, for the year we have a total budget of 15,000 um, the donations so far are just um, over the 5,000 mark and there is um, nine and a half thousand dollars budget remaining in that donations budget thank you madam uh, uh, general manager uh, I go to councillor Reinhardt thank you mr. mayor um, uh, because it's uh, using the Town Hall Theatre and its music in the regions, um, I was wondering if we put this through the Imagine budget since we've got quite a lot of money sitting there that's sole purpose is for the Town Hall. Thank you, uh, Councillor Reinhold. Um, whilst the General Manager and Director of Administration and Finance are discussing that, I, I just thought I'd let Council know that I actually rang Mr Whitney uh, the other day, the General Manager of Music in the Region, a delightful gentleman, um, and I, I just wanted to learn a little bit more, um, but also I asked him, uh, would the event still proceed if uh, Council weren't in a position to assist, worst case? And he said, well, of course, you know, we would continue it, um, which, uh, which he was just so candid, um, and I, I'm just so grateful to him for his candour, that he said, of course, it would proceed regardless, but uh, he said that no harm in asking, and I agree entirely with that mm. principle. Councillor Reinhold. Yes, I went to uh, the one last year up at Platform Y, and it was just fantastic. So um, I'm just there to encourage it, if, yeah, help in any way we can. Thanks, Councillor Reinhold. We'll go to the General Manager. Through you, Mr Mayor, with the um, Imagine budget, that is usually used for subcommittees of um, Imagine. So um, there's nothing stopping the council to resolve that way, but that is not the usual use of that particular budget. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ryan. I'll go to the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Sinclair. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, when I first looked this, I was talking to heart about whether we should support it or to what amount. But then in, in their letter about halfway down, that they're saying that uh, they will uh, send their their team to the uh, to a mischief and to tomorrow public tomorrow west public school area park central school and St Anne's school so it's just not about them being here and doing a a concert they're actually helping the schools out with their music and so forth and teaching their students and so forth so I yeah I I, I'm, I think I, I'm supporting the $500 like we've had done in the past. Well, Thank, $500 in our yeah. Thank you, Mr Deputy Mayor. So, Councillor... Uh, well, I don't think that was a motion, Mr <coughs> Deputy Mayor. No. So, Councillor Reinhold, did you have one in mind? Well, yes. I'll just imagine Councillor Reinhold, thank you. If we can't do it through Imagine, um, then take it out of our budget, please. Thank you. Thank you. So, you're suggesting... Uh, the donations budget um, of uh, up to $500 that we um, donate to Music in the Regions for the uh, Tamora Shire event, events. Yes. Thank you. Seconded the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Sinclair. Thank you. Moved. Seconded discussion, Councillor Bushell. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just hopefully we can reply back with as much enthusiasm as what they've written in their letter. <laughs> There's many big words and elaboration, please. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Bush. And you're quite right. And again, talking with Mr Whitney, um, it was just a real uh, pleasure. His enthusiasm is most infectious and he, he thinks Tomorrow Shire is certainly um, a great place to uh, for his team ensemble to perform. Councillor Oliver, discussion on the motion. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, the Imagine budget, do we use all of that every year? Or is it... I mean, it's it's... Robbing Peter to pay Paul, basically, isn't it, I suppose? So, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Oliver. Um, the Director of Administration Finance. Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, we definitely haven't used it all in recent years. Yeah, in the last probably five years, haven't used it. Mm, well, maybe. So, the mover and second up, before I put the motion, do you wish to amend the motion or is it as is? Well, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd Council like to move an amendment that we use the money from the Imagine budget. Well, thank you, Councillor. I was just wondering, though, whether the... Uh, sorry, Councillor Reinhold or the Deputy Mayor wanted to amend their motion. Otherwise, I'll accept your amendment. So the mover and second are uh, happy 
take it out of the Imagine Tomorrow just leaves more money in the donations budget for other activities. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Reinhold. And maybe they could be put through as performing the Tomorrow Arts Council, performing arts. Maybe they could write to them and say, could we... No. Thank you, Councillor Reinhold. So the mover and second are happy. I'm going to put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. Councillors, over to page 514, 6.2, Murrumbidgee Local Health District. I'm declaring an uh, interest as Chairman of the Tomorrow LHAC and I'll vacate the Chamber and call on the Deputy, uh, the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Sinclair, to preside. Thank, thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. I'm happy to support this. Um, these people do a magnificent job, and besides that, we've got five hundred dollars to spare. <laughs> so, thank you, Mr. Mr. Deputy. Thank you. Um, yes. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, this year's winner was Rebecca Stimson, uh, tomorrow uh, lady. So uh, it's nice that we're acknowledged in the Murrumbidgee uh, Local Health Awards. Okay. We have a mover and seconder. Oh. Well, Councillor Bush will second the motion, so further discussion? No further discussion. I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Motion carried. Thank Sorry, you. Sorry, just to clarify, um, you're um, suggesting a $500 sponsorship amount this year again? Okay. Yep. But, yeah, everyone happy with that 500 yeah. Mr. Deputy Mayor. Oh, just to just to inform you that uh, the council just uh, moved to uh, allocate five hundred dollars towards the awards. Thanks, Mr. Deputy Mayor, and thank you, Council. Uh, Councillors, we go over to page five hundred and eighteen, sixteen point three, Bright Beginnings Christmas Party. The General Manager. Through you, Mr Mayor, this is um, seeking approval for use of Gloucester Park on the Sunday the 17th of December. There are no financial implications for this request. Thank you, Madam General Manager. Councillor, Councillor Good. I move the recommendation. Thank you. So, Councillor Good's moving that Council grant approval for the use of Gloucester Park on Sunday the 17th of December this year for the Bright Beginnings Christmas Party. Second, Councillor Bushell. Thank you. Moved. Second in the discussion. There's no further discussion. I'll put the motion. All those have had a pair. Thank Council Bushell, you look like you've got something cheeky to say. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. I don't, I'm still scarred, um, literally, <laughs> Councillor Bushell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if there's no serious uh, further discussion, <laughs> I'll put the motion. All those have had a, that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Uh, I declare the motion carried. Uh, let's go to page 519, 16.4, Sacred Heart Parish, the General Manager. 
Thank you, Mr Mayor. Through you, this is a request for use of Callaghan Park and also for assistance financially um, towards a hire of the mobile stage for the annual Christmas Eve Mass on the 24th of December. Thank you, Madam General Manager. Councillor McLaren. I move that we accede to their request out of the donations budget. Thank you. Councillor Mc McLaren has moved that we accede to the request and uh, donate those high fees back. Uh, is there a seconder for the motion, please? Thank you, Councillor Good. Moved, seconded, discussion. I'm not looking that way anymore. Yeah, no further discussion, I'll put the motion. All those of that opinion, please say aye. The contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. Uh, any uh, late, urgent items of, of correspondence, Madam General Manager? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, no, there isn't. Thank no, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, councillors, we go to page 521, business with notice, which is nil. We go over to page 522, notice of motion we've received 18.1 uh, from Councillor Irvine. Councillor Irvine. Yeah, I just move a motion that um, reports or responses be provided by the general manager or delegated representative in relation to uh, the status of the progress for the Dustin Rose subdivision, um, the status of the progress for the Highfield subdivision, and um, any information regarding the cabin development at Air Park, Caribbean Park. Thank you, uh, Councillor Irvine. I, I will note, um, uh, Councillor Irvine, that, that I, I was aware that this was on your agenda, Council, um, Madam General Manager, to happen as a matter of course, um, uh, Councillor Irvine. But um, if you're moving that motion still in light of that, you still wish to move? Okay, thank you. Uh, seconded for the motion, Councillor McLaren. Moved and seconded. Uh, discussion? Discussion on the motion, Councillor Irvine. Well, it's very encouraging to see that Dustin Rose looks, from um, mm. all intents and purposes, to be very close to being um, uh, ready for sale and um, to start to alleviate some of the um, shortage of um, good developable um, building blocks. Um, there's um, obviously some um, interest in the Highfield subdivision as well, and um, it'd be interesting just to get an update on where that's up to. And um, the uh, third item is in relation to an article that was in the newspaper recently, um, but that seems to have been addressed by some correspondence by the, um, the general manager today, so, or actually yesterday, so we're up to speed with that. So would you like to withdraw number three, Councillor Irvine? Oh, I think it could stay there, but there may be some, um, some of this um, response um, included in the minutes to address that. Okay, thank you. So you uh, would like to see number three left in. Councillor McLaren, you're happy? Okay, thank you. Further discussion on the motion? Uh, if there's no further discussion on the motion, and Councillor Irvine and Councillor McLaren, uh, I'm assuming that you, because um, you haven't got a, a response time and date, that it will just be as soon as practicable, is suitable? Yeah, thank you. Uh, no further discussion. Uh, so the General Manager, you didn't have any comments, General Manager? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, I will not be able to add the correspondence that was sent to councillors yesterday to the minutes of this um, meeting. Um, if the request remains the way it is, it'll have to come back through a report or council will be satisfied with the response that was already received yesterday. So it's business, at, like the correspondence that was sent was outside of um, this process of the council meeting. Thank you. Very much. Uh, councillors, you have a motion before you and I'm going to put it. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. Oh, please raise your hands for those of that opinion. Uh, to the contrary, uh, I declare the motion carried. Thank you. Uh, and that will happen um, uh, when uh, time permits. So thank you very much. So page uh, 524, business without notice of an urgent nature. Thank you. Uh, so, councillors, we now proceed to page 525, councillors information paper. Has someone moved that the information paper uh, be received? Thank you, Councillor Good. Councillor McLaren moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. To the contrary, no. Clear the motion. Carried. Thank you very much. 
Uh, Council to see various items in the information paper, the LGNSW annual conference report, amongst uh, other regulatory control reports, etc. Uh, Councillors, anything you wish to highlight? I think what was really, really special, and they seem to stand out, which is, uh, I think means a heck of a lot uh, to all of us, and that is on page uh, 559, uh, the email that Council received uh, from a couple who hailed from Bathurst, uh, just praising various aspects of, um, of Tamora Shire in terms of uh, the presentation of the town, the roads, the cleanliness, public venues, uh, and the people. Um, museums were outstanding. Uh, anyway, I, I just thought that was great medicine for every single uh, councillor, staff member, and citizen uh, to read um, those encouraging words. So thank you for sharing that, Madam General Manager. Uh, Councillor Reinhold. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, just a, a request on uh, item 20.5, the, um, the Ranger, uh, with Christmas approaching. Um, if we could have a little push on advising people to stick to the two-hour parking limit in the main street, please. Thank you, Councillor Rana. I do acknowledge that the Ranger has been very proactive in that space, uh, Mr Director, uh, in recent um, times especially, and uh, I'm sure that, um, uh, that the comments have been noted. The Director? Yes, definitely. Uh, December's our busiest time, so we'll make sure his presence is felt. Thank you. Uh, councillors, any other items? If uh, Councillor Good. Um, thank you, Mr Mayor. I'm, I'm just disappointed with the response from Catherine King, MP, in relation to the heavy vehicle bypass. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're anywhere. Thanks, Councillor Good. Well, we're certainly uh, in discussions with um, Transport for New South Wales uh, and the Minister just to get that a uh, response from them in relation to the options presented, um, their initial thoughts. So there's a um, uh, body of work being done there. So we'll be uh, next year, obviously in the first quarter, we intend to um, <sighs> get back on the bandwagon. But yeah, it certainly was um, uh, certainly not an inspiring response. So I, I do acknowledge that. Uh, councillors, if there's nothing further in the information paper, uh, then, in accordance with Section 10A of the Local Government Act 1992, I advise that there are several matters that are deemed confidential and accordingly I require a motion to have those matters considered. So we we'll, um, just go into the, to that and then we will have a recess for five minutes. In accordance with Section 10A of the Local Government Act 1993, I advise that there are several matters that are deemed confidential and accordingly I require a motion to have those matters Considered. Thank you. The Deputy Mayor, Councillor Ryan, I'll move and second that all those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. I declare the motion carried. Thank you. We move back into open council and I now invite the General Manager to please advise uh, of the motions which have been brought from closed session into open council. Thank you, the General Manager. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, the confidential resolutions that we've brought into open are that um, the minutes of the TAIC committee held on the 9th of November 2023, it was resolved that the reports be received. It was moved by Councillor Sinclair, seconded by Councillor Good. Um, it was resolved that the reports and recommendations as presented be adopted, moved by Councillor Good and seconded by Councillor Bushall. Um, in relation to the minutes of the Assets and Operations Committee held on the 21st of November 2023, it was resolved that the re reports be received by Councillor St Clair and seconded by Councillor Good. It was resolved that the reports and recommendations as presented be adopted, moved by Councillor St Clair and sec seconded by Councillor Bushall. In relation to the minutes of the Economic Development and Visitations Committee held on the 21st of November 2023, it was moved by Councillor McLaren uh, that the reports be received and seconded by Councillor Good, and it was uh, moved by Councillor Bushell that uh, that it was resolved that the reports and recommendations as presented be adopted and seconded by Councillor Good. Um, in relation to the General Manager's three-month workshop, it was resolved that the General Manager's three-month workshop outcomes report be received and noted, and further 
that the Mayor convey to the General Manager Councillor's compliments in the manner in which she has carried out her functions and has noted a high satisfaction rating with her performance. That was moved by Councillor Bushell and seconded by Councillor Good. Um, in relation to the Bundawarra Centre renaming the RFS Community Engagement Centre, it was resolved by Councillor Sinclair that Council install a suitable plaque to recognise the contribution of Steve Holden to the establishment of the RFS Community Engagement Centre at the Bundawarra Centre, and this was seconded by Councillor McLaren. In relation to the proposed rezoning at Tomorrow West, it was uh, resolved that Council consider the matter again once the outcome of the Regional Strategic Planning Fund grant application is known to Council. And Second, if it was uh, successful with the Regional Strategic Planning Fund grant, further report would be brought to Council identifying potentially impacted stakeholders. That was moved by Councillor Irvine and seconded by Councillor Good. In relation to planning proposal, Gallipoli Street, um, Hackier Street, Millvale Road and Loftus Street, Tamora, it was, um, sorry, it was moved. Councillor Bushell. Oh, Councillor Bushell. Um, the council support the changes to the LOP as detailed in the planning proposal and submit the planning proposal to Department of Planning and Environment for gateway determination. That was seconded by Councillor Sinclair. There was an amended um, motion by put, moved by Councillor Good and seconded by Councillor McLaren. It's moved that council support the changes to the LOP as detailed in the planning proposal, provided there is 400 square metres of public open spaces on the existing lot. 47 DP 1242414 and submit the planning proposal to the Department of Planning and Environment for gateway determination. The amendment was put and carried. Um, the amendment became the motion and the motion was put and carried. In relation to the area park recreation ground lighting, it was resolved by Council McLaren and seconded by Council Good that Council note the report. In relation to the Tamora Cemetery, it was moved by Councillor Bushell and seconded by Councillor Sinclair that Council note the report. In relation to Pinnacle Community Services, it was resolved that Council support option three as outlined in the report and a future report be presented to Council. This was moved by Councillor Bushell and seconded by Councillor Good. In relation to the Employee Incentive Scheme nomination, it was moved by Councillor Good and seconded by Councillor Judd. It was resolved that Council endorse a Category 3 reward for the nominated employee. Um, there was a notice of motion put forward around road construction work and MOU progress, moved by Councillor Irvine, seconded by Councillor Judd. It was resolved that reports or responses be provided by the General Manager or Delegated Representative in regard to, number one, impact of road construction works to allow access to Altura site and upgrade of Court Street with regards to preferred HVAR. Two, that the status progress of the MOU relative to the development subdivision proposed for the airfield subdivision, and that was carried. It was resolved that Council moves the motions from closed into open by Councillor Rowan Hold and seconded by Councillor Good. Um, and it was moved by Councillor Sinclair and seconded by Councillor Oliver that uh, Council moves out of the closed Council and into open at 7.44pm. Thank you. Thank you, Madam General Manager. You've read those very, very well. Councillor Oliver? Uh, just that I noticed it said the queue was interested when I left the room. It's a non-pecuniary. Any financial guarantee? Is it noted as non-pecuniary? Thank you. Uh, thank you, councillors. Uh, you've heard from the general manager the resolutions that have been brought forward from closed into open. Could I have, uh, please, a motion to formally adopt those in open council? Councillor Good, thank you. Councillor Reinhold moved and seconded. All those of that opinion, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Declare the motion carried. Thank you very much. There being no further business, I thank you all very, very much. You've done well to get through all of that. And uh, I thank you and declare the meeting closed.